<laughs> so one thing we need to talk about, because most church bands have them, not everybody loves them because they're not always able to make them sound great. They're not always played great. Sometimes they're banged out of tune. Sometimes the pickups aren't right. Sometimes the DIs aren't great. But we have to deal with acoustic guitar. Now, I was so glad you said acoustic guitar because I thought you were setting up a banjo. And I was like, guys, I'm out. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, so acoustics. No, acoustics. So some of us have the luxury of having worked with great acoustic players with yeah. great setups. And then we've had everything from there to the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. So um, more than anything, this instrument has to start with the good source. Because right. a DI or a pickup can make all the difference. Yeah. A pick strings, fingers. I mean, there's so many variables. In, in, tune. Tune. in tune. In tune. The yeah. intensity they're hitting those strings, all that. It's all that. Yeah. So we have a pretty good sounding guitar as a reference, but the part is kind of a lot of what a lot of worship leaders it's who get excited and jangly, jangly and just yeah. kind of play acoustic. So this is not necessarily meant to be like a tender plucked moment in yeah. between songs. This is just... Big worship song. Big worship song. So let's just talk about how we approach acoustic. Okay, so let's listen. Here's flat. So that that's a good sounding guitar. Pretty good sounding pickup. But it's it's in and out. Yeah. Yep. Intensity's all over. Because he's singing. And okay, he's, yeah. And he's more interested in delivering the song vocally than he is yeah. providing a great guitar performance. Right. So we just need to get this thing leveled out where we can keep it in a mix. Yeah. Yep. So I'm just going to put a high-pass filter on it. It sounds really good. Yeah. Right. But just in case there's anything that wants to kind of take off in the low end or get muddy with the electrics or what else might be going on in the low mids. I mean, that took out the booming. Yeah. I don't even think it needs EQ. Maybe just a little in the in the high mid range. Yeah, just kind of in that a vocal more, range. To... A little more clarity. Yeah. Tell me when. I would say around there, but less of it. Yeah. In there? Yeah. And I like that wideness you had going in there where it's subtle. Just a little. Yeah. Just kind of took the just edge kind of out of the it. edge off. Yeah. Okay. And then if there's anything timing wise that's inconsistent with the hi hat, it's or it's kind of buried a little bit buried. so you won't notice it so much. There's something about an acoustic, you said hi hat. If you listen to the characteristics of an acoustic and the characteristics of a hi hat, they are very, very, very similar. similar. Yeah. So it might be something to remember too yeah. as you're pulling up an acoustic. Where does the panning go? Yeah. Right. And keep it in mind where your hi hat is because they're gonna work together. Yeah. Or work against each other. Right. So compression. Yeah. So this will really help us get the some of the inconsistency yeah. in the playing leveled out a little bit and make him feel like he's playing more in the Consistently. Yeah, in yeah. the pocket. First thing I do with a compressor on an acoustic is attack and release really fast. Yeah, me too. Make yep. sure there's no hold. Just go ahead and crank those down as fast as they can go. And then I'm going to crank that ratio up to around four and a half to start. And let's turn it on. Okay, that was way too much game reduction. Much. So let's yeah. start over here. Don't watch, just listen. I want to give some makeup gain. I think it feels like a little too much compression. Just uh, a skosh. You want to back the ratio down? Yeah. You fixed it. It's, it's magic. <laughs> Yeah, so for me, like three to four dB of gain reduction, just kind of overall is sort yeah. of a good, kind of comfortable starting point. That feels better. So that, that in the middle of a mix and a vocal and all that, it's gonna be, that's gonna be there. But we can always put like a little more icing on the cake for this kind of stuff, right? We can always can. <laughs> of course. 
So, so Waves has a great plug-in. It's one of their signature series. It's called Maserati and it's it's just sort of a, there's a bunch of presets and it's designed for acoustic guitar. So there's some presence boosting and some exciter and some punch and some other things that, this is one of those where it's like, turn it till it sounds good for yeah, me, like experiment right. a little bit. But I think it adds a little sparkle and a little bit of Agreed. excitement to yeah. an acoustic. In that fact, once you get the level dialed in from compression here, then you can use this as a way to just sort of add some sheen and some... When I was getting waves going for myself, uh, I called you because you mix a lot of artists that are known for acoustic guitars. And I'd call and I was just, just like, hey, plug in for guitar. Is there anything magic? And this is what you told me. And I put it in like that same day for a rehearsal. And I was like, and I haven't done anything different. Yeah. It's just got a little bit of, little bit of mojo yep. that adds just a little bit to take that acoustic over the top. So we've got it kind of pre-dialed in. So I'll just turn the fader up and just pop it in. Some of the singing that you get from the yeah. top end and some of that sheen. Yeah. But it's really controlled. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes I listen to that and go, oh, well, by itself, it's a little thin. But you think about bass guitar and kick right. drum and rumble and all this other stuff. You, all you really want to hear on that kind of a jangly sound is that string yeah. attack like exactly. that. Exactly. And that's Especially really nice. if you've got electrics filling in the, yeah. the mid range and stuff. And keyboards and yeah. all this stuff. Yeah.